Welcome to Classics Confidential and I am here in London with Alexandra Chaxell who is um, here doing a Marie Curie Fellowship at King's College London and she's going to tell us about some of her work on a, a character from antiquity, Demetrios of Skepsis. Can you start by telling us who he was? Yes, of course. As, um, Demetrios of Skepsis was a Hellenistic scholar who lived in the 2nd century BCE and in this time he was writing a commentary on the Trojan catalogue of uh, in the Iliad, of Book 2 of the Iliad. So that, that was really his main topic. So he was a scholar of Homer then? Exactly, mm. yes. And one of the issues about him is um, he's a scholar, but not in Alexandria. Right, so right. we don't know if he has been in Pergamon, it would be quite close to Skepsis, mm -hmm. but um, there's no evidence showing or proving where he would have done his studies. Okay, okay. So, and so you say that he um, he wrote a commentary on, on a particular part of yeah. Homer. Um, is, is that all he did? Or did he, do we have evidence of other work that he did? So, no, that's the surprising thing. We only have evidence about this one work, mm. about this particular part um, of Homer, which is, I say, the Tron, Trojan catalogue, which means it was the place where he himself left, lived. Ah. So... Um, he wrote a book about his place. Right, so right. He, he was only interested in that and wrote his huge book and we must assume that this is all he did. How interesting. So he was basically sort of a local historian but he was approaching the history of his area through through what Homer had said about it. Exactly, yes, that's his um, issue, his, his main issue. And can you maybe give us some of the context of the passage in, in Homer? Where, where does that come? Uh, okay, it's, it's in book two, and in book two you have this huge two um, catalogues. First, the catalogue of the ship, which explains all the Achaean um, participants of the Trojan War and then you shift to the Trojan part and then you have a list of all the allies of the Trojans. Right. And so uh, Demetrius just focused on this part. Right. Of right. course there has been other scholars who were mainly focusing on the Achaean part because being Greek, being, um, yeah, the, the Achaean were kind of ancestors of the Greek, so most of them focused on the Greek part. But because um, Demetrius was from the Troad, mm, mm, mm. he made his particular choice and focused on the second part. So can you give us maybe an example of the kind of thing that he said about his land? Was, it, was he interested in the buildings and monuments or was it more in the, the natural landscape? Um, actually, it was both. He tried to um, find places um, looking for trees, who has been mentioned in Homer, which is kind of <laughs> strange, but he believed to have found them. But he also spoke about um, places. And one strange thing is that his hometown, Skepsis, um, he just believed that this, um, the descendants of the Trojan didn't leave the Troad, but stayed in the Troad and um, founded his hometown. Right. So instead of um, telling that, like everybody, Aeneas got to Italy and founded Rome, he just said, no, no one left. They just stayed in the Troad and, by chance, they founded my city. So, I mean, that's fascinating. Do, you, do we know um, what people thought of his work in antiquity? Was he well known? Um, that's, um, no, he wasn't um, well known. I mean, he was read by Strabo in the first century BC. Um, but Strabo um, is one, yeah, he is one of those who kind of believed um, Demetrius. Now, I know that his Demetrius's work it, it, it's fragmentary, isn't it? Can you say a little bit about how much we actually have left? We have um, kept very little of it. That's also one of the difficulties. We have um, kept. 75 fragments yeah. of a uh, book which must have had in antiquity 30 books. Oh my goodness! So <laughs> it's really 30 tiny. books about oh, that about that area that has yeah. 30 books that have grown out of you. Yeah, in the end, a few lines of Homer. Yeah, it's about 60 lines in Homer, and he just wrote um, 30 books about it. It's <laughs> a huge um, work, but yeah. we have left um, kept uh, 75. Um, fragment. Are they are they big, small? Um, most of them are really um, small, two lines or something like that. A few oh, others are a bit uh, longer, 
10 lines, 20 lines, but... But that's still a tiny proportion yeah. of what yeah. originally was. And um, so, can, can you explain how we get those fragments? Um, these fragments are quotations in other authors. I mean, as I told, Strabo quoted him. And then, of course, the issue is, how can we trust Strabo? Did he um, quote him verbatim? Or um, had he made his own changes in it? Mm. And of course, Strabo is only one source. Then we have Ateneus, who uses him in another way. And then so on, we have the um, Scolia to Iliad, right. who also mentioned him. But of course, it's still another way. So we have very different access to his um, fragments. And that's one of the issues. Um, and, and these later authors, what, um, what were their agendas in, in using him? Were they? Uh, I mean, Strabo is a geographer, right? So I guess he was using him for information about that part of the world. Exactly, yeah, and yeah. Um, but what about Athenaeus? What, what context does he quote him in? <laughs> that's a really good question mark. I mean, he was using him for strange little bits, and um, probably the book didn't look like. Um, the fragments we have from Athenaeus. He just has um, picked out a few interesting things for him right. which doesn't reflect the whole book. So, and, I mean, you're producing a new edition of Demetrius, right? So, it's making me wonder, um, I mean, seeing as we have all these little fragments in different authors, how, how do you know, do you know what order they are meant to go in? Or? <laughs> That's also an is issue. The first editor of the fragments uh, just followed a uh, geographical order. He said, okay, I'm following book 13 of Strabo, um. which is driving the, the tour. So he thought, okay, I'm following Strabo and then putting the fragments of Demetrius along this text. Right. But As if Strabo was just copying Demetrius in his order. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But I started to believe that we should maybe do it in another way, starting from the Homeric text. Yeah. And then line by line, if it is possible, to find which fragment would possibly belong to a line of the Homeric text. Yes, yeah. So well, I mean, that, instantly that sounds like a very good idea. If, if Demetrius was writing a commentary on Homer, you would yeah. imagine he would do it like from top yeah. to bottom, so the, to speak. But, the problem yeah. is, uh, most of the fragments, especially those of Ateneus, because he doesn't use it in a, let's say, proper way, you can't match them with the Homeric text. Mm. I mean, I will try to do it, but mm. um, first sight, you don't feel that they belong to this um, special part. Um, and I know, I mean, you're in the Department of Digital Humanities, and one thing that's special about your work is that it's not a, it's not a conventional edition, is it? Exactly. It's going to be a, a digital edition. Can you, can you talk to us a little bit about the, maybe the challenges or the, the possibilities that digital opens up? Exactly. The, uh, the digital part of it would really be um, try to um, show how difficult it is to get to Demetrius. I mean, we could in this digital edition keep, I mean, the Homeric text first and mm. then show how, um, how secure how sure it is to have this um, fragment mm. and if you are not sure you can uh, display it as one um, my own statement let's say right and then um, in a second um, part could be that we can um, keep the context in which the fragment is quoted so we can have huge part of Strabo and then we see the line of argument of Strabo right, right. and then we can guess um, if he has transformed it, yeah. if he is using him verbatimly yes. or not. Uh, um, so that's the two um, main um, interesting things about this digital. So you can basically um, show many more layers, you don't just, in a conventional book maybe you just have the fragments by themselves and you don't exactly. get any sense of how they uh, relate to these other texts that maybe cited them or that, that, that they were based on. So, yeah, exactly. Um, and what about things like uh, um, pictures and, and maps, will you be able to, to link to those? That would be um, a far, farther goal, to have also a kind of commentary where you can of course have the pictures maybe mm. from actual Torah, if you find the place where he's speaking about, yes. um, that would be something which is possible um, mm. in a digital form. That's great. And who, who do you envisage using your um, edition? Is it made for scholars or, or for, for teaching purposes as well, or a bit of uh, everything? <laughs> I think, uh, I hope it would be a bit of everything. Mainly it will be uh, an academic work um, doing this 
think about um, editions, but I will also make a, a translation of it, and I hope that with all this material which could be presented, it could also be used for teaching, maybe, or for interested person in the Troad, or... Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect. Well, thank you very much for talking to us about that, and enjoy yeah. the, the year in London. Thank you very much.